I'm going to talk to us a message today entitled, The Greatest. Somebody say, The Greatest. greatest. You know, everybody desires to be great. Great moms, great fathers, great parents, great individuals, great workers, great athletes. How many here today want to be great in life? You want to be great in life. Sure, there's not a problem for anybody to want to be great. We should all endeavor to seek, to strive, to aim to be great in our life. We, we should be the ones focused on, I want to be great. I want to be great in what I do and great in how I am and great in who I am. I want to be great. I want to go after and pursue greatness. Well, the Bible is very clear about God's view on how to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. If I'm going to pursue greatness and go after greatness to be a great parent, a father, a a mother, a a child, I want to be great. I want to be great on my job. I want to be great in what I do. Well, the Bible's clear on what God and how God defines greatness. How many be interested in how God defines greatness? Over the next couple weeks, we're going to define and talk about how God foresees and calls greatness in the kingdom of God and how God recognizes greatness and what God acknowledges in when somebody is being great. Great is not something that is man-made. Greatness is not something that man can achieve on his own, but it is something that God foreordains and God prepares for you and I to rise up and to be great in life. The Bible says that God's made you the head and not the tail. You're you're never beneath. You're always above. Greatness is when you are lifted. Greatness is when you have uh, become and you are thriving. You're on top of the world. You're on top of situations. Situations aren't controlling you, but you are in control of situations. How many's tired of things controlling you, your emotions, your feelings, and the environment, people, things constantly controlling you and they're hindering us from being the greatest, the greatest that we want to be in our life. And God defines it and is very clear. And over these next several weeks, we're going to talk about how to be great in your community, to be great in your family, how to be great in the church, how to be great in serving one another and and how God looks and recognizes greatness in the earth. Greatness is not by my education. It's not by my gifts or my abilities, my talents. It's, it's God has put an ability on the inside of each one of us to be great in who we are, to be the greatest me that only I could be. As long as I'm being me, nobody else can be me. As long as you're being you, can't nobody else be you. So why not, if there's only one you, why not pursue to be the greatest you that you could ever be? I've got to focus on being great, the greatest me. I can't focus on trying to get other people to be great or me try to compare myself to who I think is great. But i got to focus on being the best me, being the greatest me that I could ever be because God has put that instinct, that ability on the inside of each one of us to be great in all that we do. The Bible uh, defines greatness is meekness, kindness, gentleness, patience, long-suffering, bearing with one another, uh, being an extra mile person. Somebody say an extra mile person. It's often been said that there's less traffic jams on the extra mile highway. You know, there's that one exit that everybody's trying to get off. There's always traffic jams. It's always backed up for miles because everyone's trying to go after that one thing, that one exit. It's often been said that the less traffic jams are always in that extra mile. It's being that extra mile individual that Jesus said, when you've gone one mile, go two miles. Be that extra mile person in in your personality and how you communicate with people and your approach to life and your approach to being you. Be that extra mile person that I'm 
going to be an above and beyond individual. I'm going to go more than what's required because greatness is something that resides on the inside of us. It's an ability for you to rise up and you to be the greatest you that you could ever be. Nobody can be a better you than you. Nobody can beat you at being you. God created you unique, special, important. The Bible says we're the very apple of God's eye. We're his masterpiece. And God considers you and I great. So we know that we're great. We're the head, not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Now God wants me to pursue greatness. He wants me to understand how to be great in the kingdom, how to be great in my family, how to be great in my relationships, and how to be great in the world that I live in and what God considers greatness. If you look with me in Matthew chapter 23, in verse 11, Jesus says, But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. We'll say that again. He says, but he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Can we say that out loud together, everybody? He that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. I'm going to read it to you in the message translation. It says, do what, do, do you want to stand out? Then step down, be a servant. If you put yourself up, then you'll get, you'll get the wind knocked out of you. But if you're content uh, to be simple, be yourself, um, your life will count for plenty. You know, when I was looking at this, he says, if you want to be great, then step down. Humble yourself, and then you will be great. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. In other words, God exalts and lifts up the humble individual. Somebody that's trying to push themselves, somebody that's trying to do it all by themselves. They got their own way. Their way is the right way. They don't, the Bible says there's a wisdom and a multitude of counsel. They don't want to seek counsel. They just want to, I'm going to do it my way and do what I want to do. The Bible says he resists somebody that's proud, somebody that is proud in spirit. Being prideful is not thinking good of your, not that you're not supposed to think good of yourself. Being prideful is that you resist every other opinion. You resist every other thought. You're only going to do it your way. It doesn't matter God's way. It doesn't matter somebody that's done it already before, but just going to insist on doing it my way. Never able to learn from anybody else. Jesus drew a great conclusion here. He says, the greatest among you will be your servant. In other words, the one that is serving is going to be the greatest among you. Being able to serve one another. God defines greatness in having this ability, this unique ability within ourselves, and that is to be able to serve one another. You know, many people in the world today, they uh, dislike this word. This is not a, an attractable word. Uh, I ain't heard a yeah, loud amen already in the service this morning. So it, it's already very understood that the word servant People think it is so beneath me. Is That is not something I want on my resume that I was a servant here and I was a servant here. But if you understand in this message today and over the next couple of weeks what God calls a servant. A servant is not one that is a slave to many. It is not one that has no rights, no privileges, no ownership of themselves. Yes, in the world's opinion and the world's mentality, they've defined that word slave as somebody that has no rights, has no opinion, has no feelings, has no thought. But God defines the word slave, the word slave as a servant, as one that is humble, one that is meek, one that is mild-mannered, 
one that is able to decide for themselves that I want to be great, therefore I must learn to serve one another. Jesus said that if I try to lift myself up, I will be humbled. But if I will humble myself, he will lift me up. In other words, he will make me great. So the avenue and the road to servanthood is being able to be humble. It's being able to be meek. It's being able to be mild. It's being able to decide for yourself that I'm going to lay my life down. I'm going to be the one that opens the door. I'm going to be the one that helps out. I'm going to be the one that always assists. I'm going to choose to go the extra mile. I'm going to be the one that always forgives. I'm going to serve humanity. I'm going to serve my neighbor. I'm going to serve my spouse. I'm going to serve my family. I'm going to serve one another. Jesus is recorded to be the all-time greatest servant of all mankind. The Bible says Jesus did not come to be served, but he came to serve. The scripture defines that in Philippians chapter one, that when Jesus came to serve and not be served, the Bible says he humbled himself and he became obedient unto the cross. In other words, he took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient. Think about it. Jesus, the greatest of all time, the hero of heroes, the greatest among all men, yet when he came, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. And God defines how Jesus was a servant to all mankind. It wasn't because of so much how great he was, but how great he served. In other words, he gave himself for the ransom of many. Jesus chose to make himself of no reputation. Jesus chose to lay his own life down for his friends. Jesus chose to stick it out. Jesus chose to humble himself and forgive, even on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Jesus chose to lay his own life down. See, that ability to be great is that ability to serve. What makes you great is you being able to decide for yourself, I don't always have to be first, I can be last. I don't have to be the most important, I just gonna be important. In other words, I'm not trying to do this by climbing the ladder. I'm going to allow God to exalt me in due time. I'm going to be faithful where I am. I'm going to be committed to who I'm committed to. I'm going to be known one that serves the most. The word serve in the Greek means, I'm not going to be able to, uh, well, I'm I'm not the best on saying it this way, uh, pronouncing it, but I'm going to spell it to you and you can um, uh, figure it out. How about that? How about that? Uh, Let me find it. Where did it go in my notes? Oh, there it is. The word serve translated in the New Testament in the Greek word is D-I-A-K-O-N-E-O. Maybe we would say Denikio. I don't know. But anyways, all I know is that's the Greek word, which in the New Testament, the word serve in the Greek means to minister. Now, many people think to minister is you got to be doing what I'm doing. You got to be preaching or you got to be teaching. But Jesus displayed the form of a servant as in the form of a minister. Jesus ministered more in the low places than the high places. Jesus ministered more with a few than he did with the many. Jesus ministered more one-on-one than he did in large crowds. In other words, Jesus came to serve, but that word serve means to minister. And how he ministered, he ministered by his grace. He ministered through his mercy. 
He ministered in always believing the best in an individual. He ministered by going the extra mile. Jesus ministered by staying committed. He ministered because he could be counted on. Come on, the Bible says Jesus will never leave me or never forsake me. Jesus didn't minister in song. He didn't minister behind a great pulpit. He didn't just, his ministry was not based on his gifts, his talents, and all of his abilities. Jesus could have come down off that cross. He could have called fire down from heaven and burned them to crispy critters. Jesus could have done all kinds of things because the power was within him. He could have rebuked them. He could have struck them dead. He could have done all kinds of things, but yet Jesus chose to serve humanity, not demand from humanity. Jesus chose to help humanity. See, Jesus, in his serving, he ministered to one another. The Bible says that you and I are to love one another as Christ has loved us. See, people want to be great. I want to be great. I want my kids to be great. I want my family to be great. I want our church to be great. I want you to be great. But I got to understand that greatness in the kingdom of God is not all the accomplishments, but it's all of those I help accomplish. It's, it's not about what all I get done. It's about how many people I take with me in getting it done. It's not about what all I get to do, but it's all those that get to do life with me. See, I don't want to just be an island to myself. I want to be one that's helping push people to be great in their everyday life, to be great on their job, to be great in their family. And the way that God defines you and I to be great and to be the greatest in this world and the greatest in the kingdom of God is when you and I are able to serve one another, not to be served, but to serve because that is what meek people and humble people do. I'm not beneath being able to open the door or hold the door open or say thank you or be appreciative or help somebody else, pick up something for somebody else. Well, that ain't the one that put it there. See, a servant that is the greatest among us is the one that doesn't matter what somebody else did. They choose by their own will, I'm going to be an extra mile person. I'm going to be one that be the first one to forgive because you know what? That is the power and a decision that lies within you and I. Come on, you know somebody that does never forgive. It's not because someone told them not to forgive. They choose in themselves, I ain't forgiving you. But if I'm going to be that extra mile person, if I'm truly going to be great in God's eyes, I got to be the one to lay my life down. I got to be the one to give my life for a ransom for many. I got to be the one to lead and not push. See, leaders are to lead and not push. You know, pushy people scatter people. They frustrate people. No, God's wanting you and I to lead so others can follow. See, what God defines greatness is I don't lead by my degrees. I don't lead by my giftings. I don't lead by my talent, but I lead by my ability to serve one another. I lead by my ability to minister one to another. See, the greatest minister that there ever was in the kingdom of God God calls and said Jesus was the greatest, not because of the miracles he did, but how he served one another. What happened when Jesus found the woman at the well? What happened when the elders got the woman, they caught her in adultery, and they brought her to Jesus? And the Bible says that they said, the Bible says that we're to stone her, Jesus. We're to kill her. Look what she did. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Go your way and do it no more. In other words, it was Jesus' ability to remain humble and not demand or command, but able to serve and help people get free. 
I love the story my son referred to a while ago. It was the woman that had an issue of blood for many years, but when she touched Jesus, he didn't turn around and get upset. Nobody should have touched me. You don't get touched till I decide to touch you. Jesus said, no, your faith, by your decision to humble yourself and make a decision to press in and touch me, you have now been made whole. See, the woman could have got there and said, you know what, if Jesus wanted to heal me, there wouldn't be this many people. If this was my day, there wouldn't be a crowd there. If Jesus wanted me healed, he'd have come by my house. No, that's pride. That's it's all got to be done my way. It's all got to be the way I think it needs to be done. But no, Jesus recognizes a great person in the kingdom of God is one that chooses on their own to humble themselves. Because the Bible said, if I will humble myself, that God will exalt me in due time. In other words, God's going to lift you up in due time. He knows the due time, the season of each one of us. And I'd rather be exalted in to be great in God's eyes than be great among man's eyes. Because God can do more than what man could do. God's committed to never leave me, never forsake me, to stick with me closer than a friend. Man sometimes only chooses to stay as long as they're getting what they want to get. But as soon as they're not getting what they want to get, they're out of here. They're gone. God never leaves me. God never forsakes me. He sticks to me closer than a friend. But see, greatness is a decision within each one of us. I, to be great in my community means am I able to decide I want to serve my community? In other words, ministry defined in the Bible is not behind this pulpit. Ministry is not out there preaching and prophesying and laying hands on people and all these, these things. No, no, no. The, the Bible defines ministry is the ability to help. It's, it's when you and I get focused on helping others achieve, helping others win, helping others get better, helping others get healed, helping others achieve, helping somebody else make it. And there's something amazing that happens. Ephesians 6, 8 says, anything that any man does good for another, the same he will receive from the Lord. In other words, the Bible says the way I serve, the way I measure it out is the way it's going to be measured back to me. It's going to come back pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall the Lord call somebody to give back to me. See, i got to understand the way to be great in God's eyes is when I'm helping others be great, when I'm helping others solve problems, when I'm helping others get their miracle, when I'm helping others get their breakthrough, when I'm pushing others others than pushing myself, God says, now that is what I call greatness, and I'm going to exalt you, and I'm going to lift you up in due time. You will be known as the greatest among all because you chose to serve. You chose to minister. You know, we minister best one-on-one. -on -one. You know, the best way that you and I can minister and truly be used of God is when you share your story, when you share what God's done for you. Instead of listing all the things you're expecting God to do and waiting on God to do and hoping God would do and praying God would do, why not take some time and go over five things that you can narrow down and write down that God has already done and start telling people that God has done this for me, God has done this for me, God has done that for me. Why not focus on those things? Because do you know your story? You are the living epistle among all mankind and your story will build somebody else's faith. Your story will help somebody else get to the other side. Your story will help somebody get their breakthrough. See, sometimes we're so focused on what we need from God, what we're expecting from God, what we're waiting on God, that when you're in that position, you're some, some, 
sometimes paralyzed and not able to focus on other people. Helping anybody else. I got my own plate. I got my hands full with what I got going. I can't help nobody. That is the thing the enemy wants to do because that's how he paralyzes you and paralyzes me and keeps me from advancing and keeps me from being exalted in my due season, in my due time because God lifts up the humble and he stands against the proud. See, the proud is I ain't helping nobody till I get my breakthrough. I ain't doing nothing for nobody till I feel a goosebump. Until I feel a goosebump, I ain't doing nothing. I mean, until God does something. For... But see, God says, listen, what you do and help for somebody else, the Lord does it for you. You don't got to expect that person to do it for you. God's going to do it for you. See, I found out in my life, in loving people and accepting people and believing the best in everybody, I found out God already has my list, already has my needs, already has everything I'm believing for, already has it ready to open the door for me and he's waiting on me to humble myself and help somebody else get ahead, help somebody else get to the other side. It's amazing to me, the more I express the love of Jesus to people, the more Jesus shows up in my life. The more I try to display the character and the, of God, the more God shows up in my life. It's like the more I focus on God's love, the greater love I experience in my life. But if I'm only going to focus on me and focus on what I got going on and what I need and what I don't like and all this me, 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 it's like God has to resist me. I don't want to be resisted. I don't want you to be resisted. But the way God lifts up and exalts is he lifts up the humble, the meek, the mild. Do you know meekness is one of the fruit of the Spirit? Humility is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's amazing to me over my lifetime, and even I fell in the same trap, those that like myself over my lifetime being a believer that I thought I was real spiritual, but yet I couldn't walk in the fruits of the Spirit. I acted like I was filled with the Spirit. I mean, I could speak in tongues. I could jerk. I could shake. Well, I could get down with the best of them. I mean, we work on our, oh, Lord. It just Man, when the Spirit gets to moving, I, we would practice our dance. We'd put... We, And it's amazing to me, and I was the first in line. I could get down and let the spirit flow, but after church, I couldn't walk in love. Man, I could dance in church and feel the spirit and speak in tongues and fall out on the floor and lay on the floor face down, uh, just crying in the carpet, just a good old gully washer. But then all the church folk go to the restaurant afterwards. And if the waitress don't bring the food on time, if she messes up the order. You think I'm eating that? You know, I am the customer. Get up. Let's go somewhere else. What happened to that? Holy Spirit. I mean, I've seen people worship God and worship service. It's so the posture, so, oh, Lord. I mean, it's so, God. I've watched worship leaders, all, everybody. It's so spiritual up here. But then in the chair or in the hallway, they gossip about everybody. And sometimes they critique the preacher. Huh? You know what happened to me one time? My wife was like, could the man at church come home? 
I'm like, what do you mean? Here I is. Here I is. Here I is. You're like, no, 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 no. The one that shakes hands with everybody and loves everybody and talks to everybody and listens and, I mean, will stand there and listen to people talk until they're done talking. Could he come home? Could that guy come home? I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, when you come home, you don't listen like you listen to them. You know, like here you put that spiritual, am I the only one? <laughs> She's like, I want that guy at church. That's, I'd like to marry that guy. <laughs> could, could we just package him up? See, because when I was here, I got distracted and I got lost to thinking here was where I need to put it on. But I shouldn't be putting it on at church. I should be putting it on when I walk out of church. See, being able to serve is the decision I make and you make. It's not somebody making it for me. See, if others make the decision to serve and to humble themselves because somebody is humbling you and making you do something, then you're acting as a slave. But when you and I choose to humble ourselves, knowing that God will exalt me in due time, and God considers the greatest in the kingdom of God is one that takes upon themselves a form of a servant, and they're an extra mile person. They're going to believe the best in everybody. They're going to talk the best about everybody. They're going to help others achieve, others winning, others succeeding is more important than them succeeding and them winning, and they're here to be a servant to all. They're here to lay their own life down to help everybody win. See, God considers that kind of an individual great. So sometimes we in the church, we think that the greatest in the church is one with all the gifts. Man, I want one of that. I want to do that. But see, if that greatness or that gifting in an individual that you see in the kingdom of God is not doing it to help others from a pure heart and it's all about them and all about them being right and them making it to the top and stepping on everybody to get there and their mentality, the way it's done is the only way it's supposed to be done and they're not open to the group. They're not open to the whole. They're not here to get in unity with everybody. They're just all about themselves. Then that individual is is not trying to be a servant the way God calls the servant. Because a servant in the Bible, God considers you to be one that's able to minister to others. And not minister because you know the Bible, but minister out of your heart. Minister out of the love of God. You know, the Bible says faith without any action is dead. Well, serving without any love is dead. You can't serve if you don't love. And if you don't love, you'll never be able to serve. See, Jesus did not serve because his father told him to. Jesus loved humanity. The Bible says he laid his own life down. See, when you and I get to heaven, I want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not, well... You made it. Here's Chad. He made it. Chad, just step on over there for a few minutes. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in. I'm over there. What, what about me? Just stay right over there. We'll get to you in a little bit. How many of y'all's desire today would say, no, I want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on. Are you believe that? My last scripture I want to read to you is in um, Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter um, 12, verse 3. It says that Moses 
was very meek above all men upon the face of the earth. And God made Moses great. You know, the word meekness is the same word as the word humble. The Bible says because Moses was a meek man, God made Moses one of the greatest among all the men in the earth. See, I'd rather somebody say God did that for him. God worked that out in him. He could do that. It had to be God's hand on his life other than, you know what, they went to this place, they knew that person, they did da 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 and they got all of this because they were in the right place and knew the right person. No, 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 I believe in all of that, but I first want it to be that God clearing the path, God making a way, God exalting, God lifting up, God opening doors. I want God going before me, making the crooked places straight. All I need to do is have that heart of a servant and be humble enough to realize... I need everybody. See, true humility means I need you. Not that I want you, but I need you. I need each and every one of you to help me be me. Help me be the best me. And that when we learn that we need one another, we're not an island to ourselves, but we need each other. Do you know the disciples didn't pick Jesus? Jesus picked the disciples. Jesus went and said, come and follow me. In other words, he was saying, I need you. They're like, well, I ain't even been to Bible school. I don't even know nothing. He said, no, I'll make you fishers of men. You come and follow me and I will show you. In other words, Jesus ministered to the disciples by his lifestyle, his conduct, and how he treated foreigners, how he treated other people. Jesus displayed the character of God when he come in contact with people that have disobeyed God. Jesus was the one able to forgive people. He was the one to extend grace to people. He was the one to show mercy to people. And do you know that that greatness on the inside of you is that ability for you and I to decide today, you know what, I'm going to start focusing on other people and helping other people than not just focusing on myself. Would you stand with me and let's pray this morning? Come on, did you get anything out of this today? Did you get anything out of this this morning? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today. All over this room, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. God, I thank you today that you've deposited greatness on the inside of us. That ability to win in every area and everything we do. And God, I just decree and declare that that ability to be great, that ability to be humble, that ability to serve one another, and always looking to be served. God, that we release this in this church and in this body, God, that we want to be a servant to all. Father, I thank you that you'll exalt and you'll lift up. You'll raise up. You've already made us the head and not the tail. We're winners. We're not losers. We always overcome in every area of our life in the name of Jesus. Right now, all over this room, if you're here today, say, Pastor, I don't even know if I died today, if heaven be my home, but I want it to be. I want to pray for you and lead you in that prayer. Maybe you're here today and you want to rededicate your life to God or you want to get water baptized or you're ready to get committed and get planted in a local church to start the growth process and get connected with one another and grow and become all that God wants you to be. All over this room right now, in Jesus' name, if that's you today, He said, Pastor, when you pray, would you add me to that prayer? All I need you to do right now is just lift up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. When you pray, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands are going up all over this room. Just hold your hand up high. Say, Pastor, when you pray, add me in that prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, all over this room, just hold it up high. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? If you're serious and you mean business with God, you can put your hands down. If you're serious, like, Pastor, I'm serious today. I need you to take that next big, bold step, and that is to get out of your chair and come and meet me right here at the front of this auditorium. If you're decided today, I'm going forward with God. I'm receiving Him. 
I'm gonna do this thing. Come on, if you're serious, get out of your chair and make your way down to this altar right now. Come on. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on, make your way down. Heads went up. Come on, just come down and meet me here today. Come on, church, let's give the Lord praise. If you raise your hand, come on, I'm waiting on you, I'm waiting on you. Come on, Desi, let's give the Lord praise. 